All right, good morning, church. How are you? Great. Well, welcome to Park Cities. Uh, my name's Han. I'm the worship pastor here in the Great Hall. And I got to tell you, it's always refreshing to actually be there and not here um, and to just join the family of God and worship. I've been so blessed today. I hope you were blessed, uh, Melody and Harlan and Metheny, uh, leading us in worship. Um, man, I'm just so grateful for our team. Well, before we dive in, I wanna pray for us. And what we've been doing every week is we've been praying the Lord's Prayer together. So at the end of my prayer, uh, I'm gonna pray the Lord's Prayer. And so I would ask that you would join me in praying that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's just give him our hearts right now. God, we thank you for this Sunday. Lord, we sometimes forget just how much of a privilege it is, Lord, to gather and to worship you, God, in freedom. Lord, we are grateful for all of the people that you call uh, to lead us into worship. I pray that you continue to be with them, Lord. Uh, No matter who's on this stage, Lord, uh, I pray that your will will be done, that your work will be done, and that, Lord, uh, your people will be mobilized, Lord, to, to live in obedience before you. I pray that as the word of God is preached, Pray that our hearts would be softened, that we would be in a position to hear, to accept your words, and to live out what we have learned. So Lord, we, with each passing week, Lord, we've been praying the Lord's Prayer, and it's taken on deeper meaning, meanings for us, and so we're so grateful to be able to pray together the Lord's Prayer. So we pray now, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. All God's people say, amen. All right. Well, if you're joining us for the first time or perhaps the first time in a long time, we've been in this incredible series on the Lord's Prayer for the past couple of weeks. And it's been informative, but it's actually been very inspiring to me because I've, of course, grew up a Christian and, and uh, you know, I know the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we, we pray it before, uh, you know, certain services and, and it's something that we probably all know. Uh, even with the these and thous, uh, we know that version as well, right? Um, Well, so we're learning about the Lord's Prayer, and we're not learning about how to pray. That's not all we're doing here, but what we're actually doing is we're learning how to commune with God, to commune with him, to to spend time with him, and to know the words that are coming out of our mouths. And I don't know about you, but this is something that I'm continually learning uh, about as I continue my relationship with our Heavenly Father. It sounds kind of silly to say this, but you know, I've been a believer most of my adult life, and uh, I gotta tell you, I'm still learning how to pray. Does that sound weird to anybody? I'm still learning how to pray. Just when I think I've, I've, I've figured it all out, I know exactly how to pray, I know what this prayer thing is all about, God teaches me something new or a new aspect of communing with him, and, and I'm just challenged to, to know that, boy, I, I, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> And so there are times, I kid you not, church, I'll sit down in in my times of prayer and I'll ask God, Lord, teach me how to pray. I have some issues that I gotta work out. I don't even know how to pray about this. Just teach me how to pray. And this is the kind of attitude I think God, uh, he is pleased with because I think when we do that, we are coming before him as, as disciples. Just the way that the disciples came to Jesus in Luke chapter 11 and, and they asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And I want you to think about that for a second because it's like we're talking about the disciples here who have witnessed amazing things in Jesus's ministry. You know, they've witnessed miracles. They've witnessed amazing prophecies. Why not ask Jesus to teach them about that, right? Teach me how to multiply the loaves and the fish. Lord, teach me how to prophesy the way that you prophesy. Lord, these are amazing things that I wanna know how to do. Instead, they ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. This is the only time in the gospels where the disciples actually ask Jesus to teach them something, and it is this. It should tell you where true strength and power lies in the life of a disciple. 
So we've been going through line by line on what each phrase means and what it means when we utter those words. And so far, what we've learned is we've learned what it means to say our Father in heaven and how highly relational that is. As sons and daughters of God, this is very, very important. Also, we learned about hallowed be your name, approaching God with reverence, approaching God with honor. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, knowing that, man, our prayers, the words that we utter, they have kingdom implications. It's not just about our lives here, right here, right now, but man, it's about God's kingdom. Well, I would like to propose that the Lord's Prayer isn't so much a lesson on the process of prayer as it is a lesson on the priorities of prayer. So for example, when we begin our prayer with our Father in heaven, it is vital that we understand who we are praying to and the nature of the relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father. Sometimes we forget that. So when Jesus tells his disciples to ask, give us this day our daily bread, what exactly is he telling them? Well, I think there's a danger, especially for those of us in the West, in thinking that this part of the Lord's Prayer doesn't really apply to us as much, right? After all, most of us aren't wondering whether we'll have a meal or not today or tomorrow. We don't really think about that. We don't think about if we'll eat lunch, we'll probably be talking about what we will be eating for lunch. In fact, if that's all you're thinking about right now, I would encourage you to stop thinking about that right now. I'm (laughs) preaching here. So, Um, so, um, you know, it's not a problem for us. Our cupboards are full and we have three meals a day, sometimes four or five. I would guess that most of us don't worry about that. Um, But I think what Jesus is saying here in praying this is he's inviting us into a life of daily dependence on him. That's what he's inviting us to, even for those who have daily meals. You see, in praying, give us this day our daily bread, in praying that, it puts us in a position of dependence, not only when we fall into crisis mode, but on a day-to-day basis for the most mundane things, the small things, the big things, all of it. And while we may not worry about whether we'll have food on the table or not, we should recognize that it's ultimately the Lord who provides it. So in coming to him daily in a state of dependence, we depend on him for essentially two things. So my sermon is very simple. You'll remember the points as you walk out, I guarantee it. We depend on him for provision and for presence. We depend on God for provision and presence. So I wanna talk about that first thing. Depend on God for his provision. You know, I grew up in a household of five down in Tampa, Florida, and um, I grew up in a pastor's home, so that means we had frequent visitors in the house, so uh, we went through a lot of food in our house, and um, uh, we we frequently shopped at um, uh, Sam's Club. How many of you guys are familiar with, how many Sam's Club members do we have in here? Uh, Okay, how about Costco? Costco members? Okay, half and half. Um, I, I, love, I love Sam's Club, right? It's the only place you can get like a 10-gallon tub of mayonnaise, right, that you'll probably never finish in your lifetime, but you still buy it. Why? Because you go to Sam's Club, you go to Costco because you wanna save money because you, you buy in bulk, you save money, and you save trips to the grocery store. It's a no-brainer. It's a great place to go for that. Well, I wanna mention this because there, I think there are seasons where we treat our moments in prayer like trips to Costco, where we offer up what I like to call Costco prayers. That is, we only pray when we absolutely need something every once in a while, rather than pray and ask and acknowledge the fact that God provides for our need every single day. We kind of treat our devotionals that way. I think I'm guilty of that as well, right? We haven't, I haven't done my devotional all week. Friday, I'm gonna sit down for three hours and do all my devotionals. It's gonna be taken care of, right? Guilty of that, Costco devotionals, I do not recommend that. So um, so when we pray this day, our daily bread, it's a daily reminder that we are dependent on the Lord. We are to come daily before God to depend on him. Now my prayers of gratitude for God's provisions, it can be seen in my prayers before every meal, uh, not out of poverty or a life-threatening need due to starvation, but because I recognize that God is our provider and he provides for all of my needs. And this is what we're talking about. 
I mean, I don't think that Jesus intended for us to pray out of our greed for things that we want, almost like a, like a Santa, right? I, Santa, I want this for Christmas, so this is what I want. This is what I desire. And I think Proverbs chapter 30, verse eight through nine communicates this idea really well. It says this, keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. So the idea of, uh, of asking for daily bread is that we are not asking for abundance, but that we would have enough. But this is not only for our physical needs, not just for our physical needs, but also the needs of our souls and our spirits. Now, I'm reminded of a story that R.C. Sproul shared uh, in his book on prayer. And he shared this story of children in an orphanage in South Korea. You know, after the Korean War in uh, the early 50s, uh, there were all these orphans. And so um, there were agencies that came in to meet that need. And so there were orphanages that came up. And, and in the story, R.C. Sproul uh, talks about one of the agency workers who shared that even though all the orphans at the time were getting all three meals a day, every day, they were, they were still having trouble sleeping because they were anxious. There's a lot of anxiety. And so after speaking with the children, they discovered that their anxiety came from not knowing whether they would have food the next day or not, despite the fact that they were being provided for every single day, all three meals. So here's what they did to remedy this. They, they placed a piece of bread in each orphan's hand before they went to bed. Not so that they can consume that piece of bread, but so that they can be reminded, you'll be provided for tomorrow. Don't worry, we have food. You will be provided for. I wonder how many of us need reminders like this on a day-to-day -day basis for our souls, for our spirits? Because the reality is that while our every needs are being met, we are in fact unwell because of the anxieties that keep us from a life of peace. You know, I mentioned earlier that for many of us in this room, the reality is, uh, I would be willing to bet, uh, we don't worry every day whether we'll be able to eat or not. But we have something in common with those who do, and it's anxiety. How many of us can say that we did not experience any anxiety last year at all? That we, our life is just full of peace, not an ounce of anxiety in our lives. Anxiety is something that plagues every single one of us in every, any given day, any given week, in fact, Jesus mentioned this in the same chapter of Matthew uh, down in verse 25. This is what Jesus says. He says, therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And then later on in verse 34, Jesus says this, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Not having our needs met and anxiety, they go hand in hand. It's what we experience as human beings who live on this earth. And this goes not only for our physical, but also our spiritual needs. And while food in our fridge or a piece of bread before bedtime for those orphans in Korea were assurances of the next day's provisions, what would serve, I wonder, as reminders and assurances for our spiritual provisions? Well, if you remember uh, in the Old Testament, you know, Moses reminded God's people, the Israelites, of God's daily provision um, provided for, for them in many, many ways, um, including food. And in that, he, he also reminded them of another kind of provision. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3 says this, and he humbled you, right? It's talking about God humbling the Israelites. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, 
but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Thank God for his word, amen. Thank God for his word that provides for us every single day. And whether we come away with some you know, aha moment that keeps us in our Bible and journal for another 30 minutes, right, or whatever, or not, let's, let's, take, let's not take our time in God's word for granted. It is powerful and is meant to nourish us every single day. And that leads me to the second point, which is in that in praying for our daily bread, we depend on God for his presence. And when we come to the Lord for his provision, we will find ourselves in his presence. And strangely, we sometimes miss the latter. I know there are a lot of times when I do. Well, in almost every line of the Lord's prayer, we see an aspect of the presence of God and how central it is uh, to that aspect of prayer. And in the instance of praying, give us this day our daily bread, I would say that we need to focus on the provider more than what is being provided for us. Our provider provides all that we need, but in asking for provision, it's the company of our provider that nourish us in a way that nothing in this world can. You know, Richard Foster said this about prayer. He says, of all the spiritual disciplines, prayer is the most central because it ushers us into perpetual communion with the Father. Again, that word, communion, right? This is what prayer is all about. And actually, the, one of the reasons why it is one of the most central disciplines that we have in our faith is because there's the aspect of communion with God. It's not just some arbitrary term on our, you know, item on our to-do list, like driving to work or brushing our teeth. There's power in being aware of God's presence with us and knowing that he is with us and letting that be an encouragement as we go about our day. God's presence is not just something nice to experience every once in a while or when we come to church on Sunday, but it's something to be experienced every single day of our lives. It is a perpetual need. Now, I love Jesus's instruction on prayer in chapter seven of Matthew. I wanna read that for us. It says this, Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. As we think about this uh, passage, the first thing I want you to see as we think about these verses, is not to think of it in terms of needing something, but think of it in terms of needing God's presence. The second thing I want you to see is the progressively adamant nature of the pursuit. Do you see that, church? It's not just ask for something, seek. It's not just seek, but man, go and knock on the door. There is a progressively adamant nature of this pursuit. When we ask, seek, and knock, we are being called to ask, seek, and knock on the door of someone. And so with these two things in mind, I want us to see that Jesus is essentially urging us to be diligent in seeking God himself. And in our daily prayers of dependence, what we must do, church, is we must start with his presence. You know, I think so, for so many of us, we've had seasons where the presence of God and also the presence of others was a real need in our lives. And perhaps for some of you, you didn't even know that it was something you needed until you received it. And perhaps that's why you're here today. And I pray that you would find encouragement um, if that is why you're here. But you know, I'm reminded of a friend of mine who is a marriage counselor He would always say this when describing the importance of being present for others in hard times. He would often say, trauma is not determined by the painful event, but it's determined by the lack of a compassionate witness. I've seen the weight of community right here at Park Cities. I've seen what it can do to a downtrodden heart. I've seen what community can do to someone who has been anxious for months and worried about their job 
afraid for their health. Park Cities has been a place where you can experience that, but can I also say that Park Cities would not have been that kind of place for you if it had not been for the presence of God, who we depend upon every single day. God is not just a compassionate witness. He is our helper, he is our comforter, he is our strength in times of desperate need. And many of you have experienced that firsthand. Our needs are met when we knock on the door of our provider who gives for our physical, our mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. Uh, Gary Miller uh, wrote a book on prayer called Calling on the Name of the Lord. Uh, this was a really helpful book for me. It, it uh, points out all the instances of prayer throughout scripture from Genesis to Revelation, and it seeks to find a common thread through all of it. And in doing so, and in this pursuit, he defines prayer in this way, which, which I love. And he says this, he says, prayer is calling on God to come through on his promise. It is making an appeal to his character. Praying for God to give us this day, our daily bread is not only the right thing to do, but it is the most necessary thing as God desires to fulfill his promises and to make good on his character. And this is why when we knock on the door, as Jesus tells us to in Matthew 7, he will answer, he will open the door. I believe that. And the Proverbs 8, 17 is a good reminder. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. It's a promise. So if there is a central truth to our message today, if you have forgotten everything that I've said, this is the one thing you need to remember. A prayer of daily bread is a prayer of daily dependence. A prayer of daily bread is a prayer of daily dependence. So how do we do this? How do we do this? Um, as we close, I wanna do something that I like to call the prayer of dependence. And I'd like to do this together uh, right now in hopes that this will be a model for you on how I would love to see our church approach their prayer for daily bread. So even before you start to list the things that are on your prayer list, the needs, the wants, and you probably have other people who ask to pray for you and you have their needs in front of you and I have a prayer list in my journal. I mean, I, I know, I know the urgency that, that comes with coming to God in prayer. But even before you get there, this is how I would hope we would approach the Lord. And so this is what a prayer of dependence looked like. There, there are really three sections to this. First, before we ask and seek, meditate on who we are approaching in prayer. If prayer is making an appeal to his character, do you know him as loving? Do you know him as merciful? Do you know him as full of grace? Do you know our heavenly father as a God who is worthy of our trust and affections? Who is God to you? Who are we approaching in prayer right now? Let's be aware of that and meditate on that. The second thing to do is remember all the times that God has been faithful to you, right? Times when God revealed himself as loving, merciful, and full of grace. That one moment you can point to and say, man, God really pulled through for me. I needed his help. I needed his comfort. I needed his love, and I got it. And as you think about that, be in a state of gratitude. Begin to thank him. And then lastly, be honest and humble about what you absolutely need from our provider. You know, today's message called us to depend upon the Lord for his provisions and presence, both things that we need and God can give daily. Honesty and humility will allow us to approach our God with a bold reverence that asks not out of greed or excess, but a spirit of dependence and surrender. And so as we close, I wanna lead us in this prayer. But before we do that, let's put out of our minds uh, what, we, what we want from God, what we need from him at this moment. And I know that's something that I, I'm guilty of. But to take a moment to come before God, knowing who we are uh, coming before. And so with every eye closed, uh, whether you're watching online, whether you're in this room, uh, I want us to pray and I wanna lead us in this time. Let's go before the Lord.
Let's be still before him. As we begin, I want us to remember who we're approaching in prayer. And maybe the earlier parts of the Lord's Prayer might be helpful uh, as we think about the one we are approaching as our Father, the one who's holy. Something about God, something about him has led you to his door. Let's pinpoint what that is. It's out of that character that we had just been meditating on. It's out of that character that, that, he, that he, has, he has done so much for us. I want us to remember God's faithfulness, ways in which he has provided for us. Maybe it's a tangible need. Maybe it's a, a need of presence. Not just God's presence, but maybe the, the presence of, of our community, the people that God has sent our way. How has God been faithful to you? Let's think about that and meditate on that and give him thanks. Lastly, let's identify the nature of our need today. What is it that you need before him? Provision, physical, spiritual, mental. What is it that you need from the Lord today? Is it his presence? Is it the presence of others? Let's, let's present before him our requests, just wherever you are. Can I just uh, pray for us as we close our time? God, we come before you asking, give us this day our daily bread, knowing that you are the provider, focusing on the provider above our provided needs. Some of us are desperate. Some of us need you. There are many in this room with needs that vary from physical needs, uh, spiritual needs. We just need to meet with you, God. So Lord, I pray that every single person, Lord, you would meet every single person where they are right now. And even those watching online, that you would give them peace their anxieties would fade away knowing that they are with the provider right now, right here. Meet us, Lord, in our, in our need. God, thank you. Thank you for who you are. We are so grateful that we get to pray this. 
and we get to pray it every day. May we pray as much as we breathe. God, I pray that they would be a part of our, not just our daily routine, but our every moment of life that we would be fully aware of our need for you. Not just what you provide, but you. So God, thank you. I pray that even beyond today, even beyond this message, as we go out these doors to face the world, pray that we would have a new confidence going out knowing that we have met our provider today that you will continue to meet our needs as we seek after you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that. We pray pray blessings upon our church and those who are watching and listening. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen.